Greetings, Dice Meisters, and welcome to the summary for Turn 2. We've had an amazing round of diplomacy played out by two very skilled writers. A big shout out to Alejandro and Harris547 for their great roleplay, writing, and negotiating skills. We've also had a bit of trickery with the Warherds being poised to strike at two locations at once, forcing the Alliance to split their defenses. How will the split defenders fare? Finally, the fate of the River Watch and River Lands lies teetering on the border of this war. But who will take final control over this hotly contested land, and what are the consequences? Watch on to find out. As always, please leave a like and subscribe if you are enjoying this content. Doomshank Port is also in need of a new name befitting its place in the Alliance, so please leave a suggestion in the comments below. Alright, with that out of the way, let's get into it. The morning sun rose above the horizon at long last across the Strangleweed Sea. Though from the shoreline, the pervasive haze of the dusk woods dimmed its brilliance manifold. Such was the gloomy existence of Doomshank Port. Even with the capture of the port by the Alliance of Avalorn, and construction underway to make it into a new shining beacon of order, the taint of chaos clung in the air as if choking out the light. Nevertheless, this morning was a momentous one, if not fraught with anxiety. Scores of prisoners lined the streets just beyond the battered port walls, chained and gagged. These beastmen and others that had sided with the war herds waited for their destiny. One in nine, though, would not be so lucky, as they would be kept as a blood sacrifice for Dionia Hatebled, an agreement the snake-like warrior found satisfactory. The rest may live yet, but many of the Alliance didn't think the trade would come to pass. A low rumbling horn sounds the arrival of the war herd representatives, and from the walls of the port city, all of the Alliance members could see that the war herds were true to their word. Bound around the neck to each other, dozens of proud warriors of the Alliance walked in solemn silence towards their allies. With them, many more common folk, laborers, and even scholars and engineers. They were dirty, unkempt, and malnourished, but by and large, unharmed. Dionia smiles wryly, thinking back at the exchange she had with the contemptuous Gore. She had not thought it possible, but somehow the run made it happen. Release the prisoners. She ordered her followers, and at once the chains were snapped from the victim's limbs with blurred strikes of glaives. The bewildered captives waste no time and rush out the gates as the other captives return through them. A lone Pestigor shaman looks back at the Malusai warrior his diseased flesh seemingly melting from his face. He bows down low, almost like a gesture of thanks, but his twisted beady eyes blink curiously as he smirks and disappears into the exodus. Despite the safe return of the prisoners that Lady Valancourt had taken, Doomshank Port was kept at high alert. The exchange was over, but the expectation of treachery lingered like an acrid stench. So the motley crew of defenders waited patiently for the warherds to strike. Amongst them stood Curridan Whitebeard, a Dwarden who thought himself peerless in battle. He had come in search of a challenge and glory, but the wait was making him impatient. Taisha Sorrowforged, the Iron Peacocks also kept watch over the walls with longing. Sigmar had sent her far into the unknown reaches of the Interstice to hunt down worthy adversaries. But with each passing moment, she feels her triumph delayed and denied. A rumbling roar echoes from behind them both, and these champions of order are quick to turn around and reach for their weapons. But they only see disappointment. A bloated, fetid creature stands in the bay of the port, seemingly chuckling to itself. The Alliance were quick to assume it had aligned itself to the war herds, but found that this agent of chaos had come to offer assistance to the Alliance. A most strange turn of events. 
Logarius the Vile toiled amidst the muddied streets, seemingly watching and waiting for something. The air is split by the cries of a messenger rushing through the gates atop a griff charger. She drew the attention of many around, and through pressured speech, she warned everyone of a surprise attack at Oakshade. Shrieks and wails of terror pierced the woods as haunts and geists tore through like a scythe through grass. The forces of Ter Garan held their ground with the bold tenacity that their people were known for. Gunpowder choked the air as volley after volley of rifle fire pierced the incorporeal forms of the countless Nighthaunt army. Shadowed arrows flew through the air from unknown ambushes, and ranks of spear and swords stood shoulder to shoulder in defiance. Alinar shouted words of encouragement to his men, despite the terror that each of them felt. The tomb of Keldos lies dormant and hidden within the walls of Oakshade. If the forces of the dead were to reach it, untold horrors would be unleashed from their ancient catacombs. Knight and Cantor Anira and Lord Ordinator Leonidas, along with their contingent of Stormcast warriors, fought bravely alongside their mortal companions. But even with their valor and might, they couldn't quite quench the endless onslaught of the dead. The Night Haunts poured on the assault, hell-bent on securing the ritual site. They were led by Kellen the Reaper, and further supported by several vampire members of Valancourt. However, their appearance in battle was brief, and they quickly leave the field before even needing to dirty their hands. They had more important matters to attend to. The malicious spirits whirled around Oakshade like a torrent of death. Men are cut down in droves and morale plummets. Alinar had a heavy heart as he watched his men bravely fight back, but the toll was great. A crack of thunder and bolt of lightning brings forth a cadre of Stormcast Eternals. Their impact exercising the malevolent ghosts with a pulse of holy energy. They brandish Sigmarite weapons and push back with shield and spear with the cheer of Tirgaran forces at their back. Bursting forth from the tree line are dozens of Sylvaneth warriors who pierce through the night haunt enemy with barbed tendrils and whip-like vines. cries the Tree Lord Ancient, as groves of tree revenants awaken and rush the forces of death. Soon, the seemingly doomed defenders of Oakshade are pushing outwards, and the clutches of death upon the stronghold finally loosen. Kellen the Reaper abandons the siege, cursing the names of the vampires that have abandoned him to this defeat. The surrounding lands of Valancourt Castle, as well as the Riverlands, are quickly brutalized by Lord Conrad in an attempt to rouse the fury of Lady Katarina Valancourt. He has raised villages that were loyal to her and plundered graveyards to enlist into his hordes of undead. With these forces, he bided his time and watched. Her envoy had promised a duel, and he looked forward to it. The Free Guild forces led by Captain Pavel Ivansget and Lieutenant Gerhard von Kepler watched anxiously from Riverwatch as Conrad's forces gathered and waited for his duel in the twilight hours. Though competent and brave, the Free Guildsmen couldn't help but feel unease even from the safety of the walls of the outpost. The masses of undead, though aligned with them, were horrific to gaze upon. From the tree line emerged several figures, clad in rich crimson armor with burning eyes to match. Several members of the Valancourt family stand defiantly just out of range of the great cannons of the outpost. Lord Conrad nods to them in acknowledgement, but they were not the ones he planned to fight. He began to grow impatient. A monstrous howl in the distance gives way to a shadowy creature approaching and crushing the trees beneath it. Unlike any other being the mortals had seen before, Lady Katarina Valancourt was a terrifying sight to behold, and even more so when engaged in combat. She wastes no time in diving straight into a melee with Lord Conrad, 
atop his zombie dragon mount. The two exchanged blows and bellowed out roars that would burst the heart of any lesser man. Yet despite several bouts, neither could gain the upper hand and claim victory over the other. The hordes of undead surrounding Riverwatch gazed at the spectacle, their vacant minds unable to comprehend what was unfolding. The free guildsmen watched as well, but in stunned awe at the duel, terrified at what the outcome would be. If Conrad were to lose, the monster of Valancor would surely consume them all. The deafening slam of Lady Valancourt's tail upon the ground halts the battle, and everyone listens intently. Lord Conrad, I suppose I've underestimated you. Your strength is most formidable, yet I wonder why it is you stand equal to such weak mortals. Conrad lifts the visor of his helm, revealing crimson eyes and a fanged maw twisted into a sardonic smile. Perhaps it is time for the strong to stand together and crush the weak under their heels then. With a snap of his fingers, the legions of undead begin to turn away from their duel, to look upon the mortals camped upon the walls of Riverwatch. Anxiety retreats to sheer panic, as the first zombies lunge forth to devour any man within reach. Gunshots ring out as chaos envelops the Riverwatch outpost, followed by frantic cries and battle orders. Lady Katarina and Lord Conrad retreat slowly away towards the direction of Valancourt Castle, followed by the rest of the court, their laughter punctuated by the screams that they leave behind. An interesting turn of events, to say the least. How will the Alliance and the Warherds react to this betrayal? Will we see new allies forged? More trickery and treachery? Only time and our wonderful players will tell. If you want to get involved, hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified of when the quests for Turn 3 come out. Also, join our Discord channel to get active, share your battle reports and hobbying to sway the tide of war in your faction's favor. Finally, big shout out to Dunk for his great battle report this turn. Please check out the link below to see the full write-up. I just couldn't do it justice in the time frame of this video. That's all from me this time. We'll see you next time on the battlefield, and don't forget to let the dice tell the story.